one has an inner ear and one has to generate the music from that central place. And to me, it's normal. What, what I, and composing music is trying to manifest what I think should be heard and how I want to hear it. The composition Turing test begins with the work of Alan Turing, who was an English cryptographer during World War II, and invented a kind of examination to determine if you're talking with an intelligent machine, an artificial intelligence, or a human being. And this is called the Turing test. And I imagined, especially in the situation now where machines are supposedly getting smarter and smarter, that we have a group of entities that can't decide if they are human or in a computer. And of course, it's a philosophical question, and it's a question that comes up a lot in the writings of the science fiction author Philip K. Dick, whose work I like very much. So these entities can't decide what they are. Are they human or not? And in the end, it's still ambiguous. I think of it, this piece as a mini opera. Once I knew what I was going to write about, it was a question of finding the role for the bass clarinet. And he, in a way, is like a commentator about everything that's going on. And he's like the workings of the machine. And sometimes he interacts with the players. Sometimes he's an independent voice that uh, provides like an obligato to everything else that's going on. But at times, there's a key moment where he and the basso become one and that's when the, the real ambiguity begins. In modern society, is it demanded that everyone be super specialized, that if you're a composer, you have to compose this music only, in this style. And if you look at the history of composers, they always operated in many different realms. You look at Mozart, and he was writing music for religious services, he was writing music for dances, he was writing music for parties, he was writing operas. And to me, it's all part of making music. <laughs> When I first started exploring music and realizing that it was more than just my piano lessons or playing clarinet and orchestra, I found out about Cage's work and it influenced me very much. You know, the kind of, uh, the, pol the poles that uh, drew me were Cage and his notions of chance operations and stochasticism and Zen and also Zenakis with uh, the mathematics of uh, chaos and group theory. And uh, these were both very important for me. I always liked Edgar Varese and his definition of music, which is organized sound. What Cage did was say it doesn't have to be organized by the composer, it can be organized by the listener too, and it's, it's still music. I mean, music for me is just a translation of all of the things that make one oneself from a spectrum of internal processing to sound. I mean, part of, to, for, to live. I have to translate these thoughts and feelings of mine into sound. And then I say, well, it's music. To me, the sounds that I imagined would be in the future 
were closer to what was being produced by contemporary music.